I'd like to invite our next speaker, Lynn Hinton. Philosophy for children is not an oxymoron. Doing philosophy with our young people does three really important things. Number one, it gets them pondering those big philosophical ideas that are central to the way we live our lives. Number two, it really gets them thinking well. And number three, it enables them to explore those big ideas collaboratively with their peers. Let me give you an example. A child in my primary school class once asked, if you seek vengeance, do you lose your freedom and become a slave? That is exactly what he asked verbatim. I had just read them the story of William Tell. Big ideas, deep thinking. When asked by one of his classmates for a little bit more of an explanation about what he was thinking, he said, well, if you want to get revenge on someone and you focus so much on getting that revenge that you can't think of anything else and you, re you become obsessed with getting that revenge, well, I'm wondering, do you lose your freedom and become a slave to that obsession? This was a group of 10 and 11-year-old primary school children in a philosophy class. Big ideas, deep thinking, with others. Let's have a look at these three ideas a little bit more closely. First of all, big philosophical ideas. There was a serendipitous moment for me many years ago when a, maths, a mathematics lecturer made a passing comment about being interested in philosophy for children. Seriously, I thought, philosophy for children? The idea intrigued and captured me. But the more I delved into it, the more I realised how relevant philosophy is to the lives of us all. You see, the wonderful thing about philosophy is that we're talking about those big, important things, things that are fundamental to the way we live our lives. Should I be helping my neighbour more? Is believing something and knowing something the same? If I believe something and my friend believes something different, is one of us right and one of us wrong? And who decides that? Is it all right for rich countries to be buying many more vaccines than they need when poor countries can't afford to buy any? And what about the ethical implications of vaccine intellectual property? It's familiar, isn't it? Philosophy is all around us, all the time. As Socrates said, we are discussing no small matter, but how we ought to live. I can't think of anything more important, big philosophical ideas. Number two, thinking. Philosophy is also about exploring those big ideas in a disciplined and rigorous way, using reason and logic in order that we can better understand them. Searching for examples and counterexamples, seeking alternatives, recognizing mistakes in reasoning, developing good argument. As Wittgenstein said, philosophy aims at the logical clarification of thoughts. Good thinking is the backbone of philosophy. Our young people need to be able to think and reason well, particularly in the current climate of social media, conspiracy theories, and the need for personal accountability. To be able to articulate not just what they think, but why they think it. We want them to think creatively and critically and with great care. To wonder, imagine, puzzle, reflect and question. And to talk excitedly about things like justice and freedom and truth and existence, and friendship. We need them to be ruthlessly curious, to follow leads, and to draw reasonable conclusions. I believe that the core business of schools should be to, to overtly and explicitly teach our young people how to think, not what to think, 
how to think. It's up to schools to provide the time, the space, the structure, the skills, and crucially, really important things to think about, philosophical things. And it needs to be planned and comprehensive because learning to think well is much too important a thing to be left to chance. So, big philosophical ideas, good thinking. Number three, collaboration. The wonderful thing about doing philosophy in the classroom is that we're doing it with others as a community. This demands that we listen carefully and patiently to the ideas of others with a will to try and understand what they mean. That we explore disagreement respectfully and that we're prepared to change our mind. That we willingly try and move towards becoming more reasonable and reflective people. So, big philosophical ideas, good thinking and collaboration. I'm fortunate to have been involved in two schools where philosophy has been implemented across the school as a core subject. Firstly, at a state primary school where I was the principal for 14 years. And secondly, here at Hillbrook, an independent secondary school where I've been involved for the last seven years helping with the implementation of philosophy. Let me take you inside some classrooms. We asked our primary school students questions like, is progress always a good thing? And where do your thoughts go when you finish with them? And they asked questions like, does age affect your ability to be heard? And do we actually respect stronger people? Or are we just afraid? Let me be clear, these questions have come from the children. That's just the kind of thing they wonder about. And then there's this one. How do you know when something exists? This group was raised by a small group of Year 3 students after uh, they had heard the story, The Bunyip of Barclays Creek, by Jenny Wagner. Primary school children say that philosophy is a study of the way life works. It's a thing where we learn to reason with people. It's using the thinking part of your brain. And it's a community getting together and being brave. Philosophical ideas, good thinking, collaboration, it's all there. Stepping inside a secondary classroom is not much different. They're just a bit older. But philosophical ideas, good thinking and collaboration are all still there and easily recognisable. A couple of questions raised recently by Year 9 students. Can knowledge be a burden? And is it ethical to remove discriminatory words from the dictionary, such as the N-word? That's definitely philosophy. They also slide easily into comments like, there's a fundamental issue with this argument. And I'm not sure that I have an entirely cogent justification for that assumption. That is exactly what he wrote, verbatim. I'd call that good thinking and reasoning. It's also metacognition. And as for collaboration, I have a reflection here, written reflection uh, done recently by a Year 9 student. Philosophy has taught me to actually listen and value other people's ideas rather than only hear things that solidify my personal viewpoint. I think that's pretty powerful for Year 9. Although I must say that one student, um, high school student, described philosophy as organised arguing. <laughs> I love that. It's a cracker. <laughs> I especially love how philosophy just naturally spills outside of the classroom. Like the Year 9 girl who suggested that climate change is a good example of the tragedy of the commons. Well, the eight-year-old girl, when I was trying to explain something to her, saying, I know, it's like that thing we do in philosophy where we say this is true and this is true, so this must be true. That thing is deductive reasoning. Or well, the five-year-old prep boy 
wandering through the playground with his twin brother, saying, I really love reasoning and philosophy, don't you, Tuggy? <laughs> yes, really. Here they are, up the school tree. That's Dougie on the left. The good news is that bringing Socrates and his cohorts and their wonderful big ideas into the classroom is much easier than you might think. And it's very, very satisfying because it doesn't just stay in the classroom. It spills into the playground and makes them calmer, kinder, more reflective and fairer places. And I believe that it has the potential to go much further than that. If we do want ethical, reasonable and reflective human beings in our world, able to live satisfying lives and, con and contribute graciously to society, then there's no question in my mind that doing philosophy at school will help us get there. I'd say that's definitely an idea worth spreading. Thank you.